I'm Wai Po Tang. The art of expression is from my past experience and influence in my Wing Chun training. I wish to present to you my picture, my composition of the Wing Chun style. Kicking is so important to take into consideration timing and different types of speed. Although you only saw one speed, you've got to learn how to react to your opponent. You have to actually have the opponent to move and to keep on moving rather than stay, staying still. The idea of moving, you've got to learn to use different angles and you've got to adapt to how your body weight adjusts, either going backwards forward, sideways, or to the other way. Or if you're in trouble, you've got to learn how to recover and to deliver a kick. Using a kick, meaning either you use it to set up, or to use a hand to set up and then kick, or use your legs to set up and then punch. As you see earlier, now the idea of moving, moving around to get a distance, see how we react. As I did earlier, my hands went up to cover the vision. So he thinks the activity is at the upper level, upper level being the head area. So he's preoccupied in this area here while the leg actually goes downwards. Although it's not considered as a power kick, the front heel kick, but it's a kick to actually set you up for the first advantage, where you take him from here and then you can follow up with its uh, other techniques. Again, a setup could also be, as you keep kicking to the body area, again, staying on simple kick. When you keep doing this, he will either drop his hand or he will either lift that leg up. So there's two ways he's going to react, that you have a rough idea how he's going to react without moving backwards or sideways. Okay? So as you do that, let's say if you lift his leg up, you can set up by taking that leg. 
Or, as you come down, as you kick, if you use hand come down, you already got to set up as you kick and you punch. So the idea of using this simple straight kick can be used in many, many ways. But the idea of actually using it directly, we've got to learn to be able to shift your legs moving all the time. So it's prepared to go. Relax but alert. And not tense, static and set. Okay. Read his movements, measure his distance. Timing's crucial here. Counter his attack as soon as his eyes widen and his shoulders tenses. Training the leg involves not only kicking, but also blocking and footwork. Blocking the three main areas of the center, inside gate and outside gate. Good footwork allows you to become more mobile and greater chances to move in and out from the opponent.
the idea of a Wing Chun block is very different from a lot of many styles, uh, due to the fact that the blocking, most of the blocks are soft block. What I mean is a lot of it is uh, emphasized on absorbing strength and deflecting uh, power. So if somebody's stronger, there's a strong punch come along, rather than meeting it with force and try to build up such great tension to make a block, the Wing Chun theory is to, is to actually go the other way. So actually absorb and deflect. And it's not just down to one movement. You're talking about many movements, combinations. You know, if somebody attacks you, it's not just purely just one punch. And you try to block it as hard as you can. The idea in the Wing Chun system is to block it with a minimum force with a blocking and a maximum force with a strike. As an example, if a punch, if a punch comes along, the force is coming straight on. So therefore, the using strength to go like this, to block it as hard as you can, takes a lot of effort, although you are still blocking it, and it's effective as a single movement. But then, you can also block it effectively, blocking this way, or when you punch, and you're hardly using any force. You punch again. As the force is coming this direction, the hand intercepts. Okay, the interception, as it comes forward, you bring it back in and take it to one side. And that's what I mean by a soft block. And a hard block is actually trying to clash as hard as you can against it, which is what I think is a lot of unnecessary strength use. But you could save that as you're blocking, and once you're finished, boom, you concentrate on your maximum force from here. Also, it gives you a great chance to recover very quickly. Once you block, you're prepared again, and you're ready. Now, if somebody throws you one punch, and then the next punch, and kick you, or, or grab hold of you, the chances are actually blocking. <laughs>
Therefore, adaption is important. As in this case, the opening in front of me where the guard hands is apart, that's where you can go for a straight punch, straight in. Okay, so that's when the gap is open for you to do a direct straight punch. When there's no gap, when it's well guarded in the center line, as the punch can't get through, or the difficulty of getting through, you may be able to punch through the guard a lot easier to sidestep. So you've got an opening on this angle here. Right here, so your eyes is a path. See straight through to your center line and deliver that turning straight punch. And forward, boom, and punch. A lot of time as you're doing sidestep, if you're not successful, if he reacts to you, you always have a chance to come back to guard again. So you do that all the time, boop, open it. Okay, so you open him up, step, step, boop, and punch. Step, and punch. All that time, you've got to train the eyes at the same time. The eyes is so important. Now the first thing is to use a speed that you can see a clear punch. You can actually see the fist, see the knuckles. Now it's pointless if you keep on throwing a punch every time you get a blur of vision. Now the idea of tra training is to build up and make the movement successful. successfully, depending on how fast and how slow he reacts. Now all this theory here goes right the way through to blocking, to kicking, to grappling, to throwing. The idea of training is to be successful while you're training. When you start competing right at the beginning, when you're using far too much speed and far too much power, you'll find you've lost the skills. You're not doing skill training. The only thing you probably achieve is good fitness, and that's probably it, and a bit of strength. Now, if you're training for skills, work skills. Build up the strength and speed afterwards. And if you separate your training for speed, if you do speed training, and then do strength training. But when you're learning a skill, it's important, good rhythm. It's got to flow, it's got to be natural, and you've got to feel good. And to be able to do that, you have to. You have to repeat the movements over and over again. And that is the uh, hardest part of training.
Okay, the idea of the sticky hands, qi zao, we have the double sticky hands, is an exercise, a training exercise to build up some of the skills that you require for close quarter in fighting. Now, mainly it depends on the uh, half visual reaction and half uh, by feel. So as you come into close quarters, the idea of actually feeling the force and learning whether you can cope with the force and resist it or to go with the force and also learning positioning your hands. Position hands in a way ready to attack or trap or grab or block. Now this is done very quickly and there are several ways of training the double stick hands. First one being very light, continuous. And then also we have the other static way of training where the best way to learn is doing it single movements but static. But the whole emphasis is on based on actually reaction and multiple movements at close quarter range. Now as we come close to your partner from here, we start off and up rolling in such manner. We start off with striking first. As the force comes down, you come out, you have the palm, using the palm strike, coming outside as one attack and from here to inside the second attack, a straight. So we end up practicing like this. Now we work on the, the defensive side where the person starts to defend. Now you've got to work at a certain speed where you can actually block so you don't actually slap on his head each time. Example. There are other ways of actually getting a reaction of the person before you strike. When two hands are up here, the chances are striking is very difficult. So you must create gap by rolling the hands. As you roll, you create a gap. Force. His reaction would be either pushing it back against, you press down to strike, or to create a gap where you open his hand up so you strike here, or when he comes down to come back to guard again, you come over the top and you strike. Now all this is done by feel, so you end up doing this continuously, striking this way. And at the same time he can also attack too. So I'll play the defensive. Okay, so the idea is actually feeling. Every time you attack, you know that force is coming forward. As soon as it comes forward, that's when you get prepared to block or to get ready to guard. Now that's what I mean by actually reacting by feeling. Choreographed combinations in Qi Sao 
teaches you to understand reactions to different attacks. It's also performed purely as a traditional art. As a complete Wing Chun artist, practicing applied techniques and artistic techniques are both equally important.
psychological preparation begins here. The workout during the impact session demands a very competitive work rate. Physical and mental adaption is necessary to increase better performance. general fitness, uh, general warm-up, you've got to go for a specific warm-up too, such as actually working on impact, where the force is actually going to get up, there's a great deal of stress on the wrist area there, and also in your joints, so you've got to get used to, used to the exercise, warming up first, so you can build up the physiological and psychological strength, prepare yourself for a much harder workout on a later stage. Now we're going to move on, start warming up the legs, and then we work on gradually building Building the speed and power up. Watching the pads as though I'm watching my opponent focus and concentrate on the right timing to deliver an explosive kick.
I demand an even higher standard of myself, but stagnation appear again. I must persist and endure until I have fulfilled my intention. It's important that we understand the uh, basic principles of training. First of all, we have being specific, uh, intensity, progression, recuperation, and reversibility. Now, being specific by means of segregating and understanding different parts of training, for example, speed, strength, power, skills, and qualities. Now, you need to understand that and then train on those uh, specific issue and really finely tune. Okay, it's no point trying to mix it all up and hopefully the best will come out of it. It doesn't work that way. And plus you'll give yourself a very hard time. Progression is worked on that way. Once you've, once you've started achieving a certain standard, your muscles are used to, or yourself mentally are used to a certain technique or a certain way. In order to take another jump another level, another standard. You need to actually push yourself and uh, increase the inten intensity. The other principle uh, I forgot to mention was frequency. Now frequency is also important. How often you train, how hard you train. Now it's pointless somebody who trains 100% every day or every session. That is totally ludicrous. And any, anybody who tells you to do that is, is totally wrong. You have to train sensibly. You've got to train, on a majority of the time, you've got to train on a moderate rate. Now, only at a certain period of time, if you, if you either need to perform or you need to fight, you, you overload. Maybe it goes to 100% every now and then. But after then, we have the principle of recuperation. Whenever you have a hard session, you've got to allow, got to allow yourself to have a period of time to rest. Otherwise, you're come to the, uh, a mental and also a physical exhaustion after maybe only three or four weeks. And for you to actually recover from that would probably take you a lot longer period of time. And by the time you get back into training, you're back to square one again. The whole idea of training in martial arts is actually enjoy it. And it's pointless. No, you, turn your, you turn your training into a punishment. Just like sparring. We're going to sparring now and that's the best type of training aid you have. All this pad work, the speed work, power work, uh, techniques, etc. All that could be used and learned in inspiring session. And therefore, you have a total wrong idea. If you think about sparring, it's going wham, you know, go for a knockout. You may achieve a good knockout, but the, po but the problem is, you're, gonna, you're not going to actually have any time or any, any chance of training any skills. All you have is like a big punch, and that's it. But there are a lot of people with big punches, even without training.
is now to deal with simple force that comes straight forward to you. We'll do that again. As it comes forward, you take, when the force comes, switch your footwork. Take this back, bring this one over, and turn the body. Okay, now we'll use the same theory applying to hands now. This will bring you much closer towards to understanding the Wing Chun theory. Okay, now as your hand is here, now when force is pushed across this way, across this direction here, as it does that, now the idea is if you resist, if you can maintain the resistance and then stay there. If not, if it's a lot stronger, you, rather, rather than resisting, you come over. So when the hand comes this way, that leaves you open and you follow that force right away through.
the stillness of the mind and the inner breathing undisturbed, executing deadly techniques in the form of meditation, Siu Lin Tao, the first form. We need to interpret the forms, first form, second form, third form, and we need to understand and interpret these sequences. Now, in order to do that, we have to break it down and give you an idea what each movement is for. So once you're performing the form, you have a good understanding of the thought behind it. As in the first form, Tan Zhao, Gan Zhao, Palm Strike, is one of the sequence. So the Tan Zhao is a blocking hand, Gan Zhao is also a blocking hand. This is used in this way. Now as he punches, and down. And again, up and down. And that's one of the sequence in the first form. In the second form, we have guan, punch, palm strike, and out, and back. And this could be interpreted in such a way. From here, down, front, and back. I'll do it once more. The grabbing, from here, you come down, punch, strike, and back. This is a blocking hand, forward, and back. Now in the third form, a sequence which uses elbow strike a lot. Now this is done by elbow strike as an offensive strike to go for this area, neck, this area, and this area here. So go one, either horizontal, diagonal, or over the top when it comes right down from here onto the center line. Okay, that's the elbow strike. And the sequence, the common sequence of the third form, beauty, comes down, build, and strike. Okay, we'll do it once again. And strike, interpreted, could be from here. Once you strike, build, palm strike. Okay, I'll do it once again. Elbow, build, and palm strike. Or, from this side, once you do the elbow, build, you pull, and stamp. Now, this could be done in several ways and many ways, and it's down to an individual to be imaginative and creative, to pick up these techniques and use it in all different ways that you can think of, moving, reacting, and attacking. The double sword has been passed down by the great grandmaster Yu Qiu of Fatsan, China. It's different to the conventional butterfly knives seen in the other branch of the Wing Chun clan. I enjoy these traditional techniques in my stick fighting. is a self-expression. Our beliefs and our emotions are boundless. 
freedom of restriction, power, and grace, despair, but hope, courage of fear. Truth to oneself is the glory of success. Inner strength is born through the determination to seek truth. Developing the strikes, blocks and kicks, and footwork, the angles and the coordination is a major emphasis. Toughening the arms and legs is only an additional benefit. Mok Lan Zhong, the wooden dummy. <laughs> 